Hey, what is up, everybody? It's Andrew of Netflix and Chills Tabletop Gaming coming to you live through the power of Facebook and from the Chills Cars and Collectibles game room. I hope everybody had a superb Wednesday and continues to have a splendid Wednesday night. Um, now, if you're new to the channel, um, the entire month of February, we have been um, discussing a new trading card game called Legions Realms at War. Um, it is created by Future Lore Studios. Bye. Sorry, my wife came in and told me she was leaving. She's got to go charge her electric car. Um, but uh, it's created by Legion uh, Future Lore Studios based out of Canada. Sorry about that. Lost my train of thought. Um, I will be honest. Uh, first off, everybody needs to know. I say this in every video. I am in no way, shape, or form associated with Future Lore Studios or the game Legion's Realms at War. Um, they don't pay me to uh, promote their game or talk about their game. Um, to be honest, back in January when I first picked up the game, uh, when it hit our uh, local game store um, here in Clarksville, Tennessee, I will be very honest, coming from Magic the Gathering, which I'm a huge fan of, I was very, very, very hesitant in um, purchasing uh, this game. Um, because everybody knows when you pick up a TCG, a new trading card game, um, it can get costly, the collectability of it and stuff like that. And I'm not one of those people that are into trading card games for the um, the money-making portion of it. I just like to play the games and collect the cards. Uh, I'm a collector, as you can tell, behind me. Um, so, yeah, I was a little hesitant because I knew, okay, I, I'm going to end up dumping some money into this game. Um and I have. I've, I've probably bought five or six booster boxes uh, since it's uh, since I picked it up. Uh, and then they had, of course, the release of Battle Harvest at the beginning of this month, um, which wasn't a giant expansion. It's more I consider it more like a mini expansion. Um, but I bought uh, a couple. Of I think I bought three boxes of those. And then uh, Future Lore Studios graciously sent me a uh, a box um, for for uh, talking about their game which they didn't have to do I didn't ask them to they they just sent it to me it was really cool of them and they also sent me a couple other cool items so but yeah um, last week we uh, I talked about um, you know when you get into trading card games you you uh, you get into collectability you get into playing tournaments or playing with your friends and you get to into building and revamping these decks that we forget about one thing that's overshadowed, which is the lore, how the games were created and started, um, how these fantasy worlds and entities in them um, were created. Um, and we talked about that last week, and we actually um, went over the Old War Saga, chapters 1, 2, and 3, um, which was a surprise to me because I didn't see 3 coming out. Uh, as I was, It came out like 30 minutes before I did my, the episode last week. Um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna be actually doing tonight the Tyrant Saga Chapter One. It's uh, it's it's not super lengthy, but I, I figure we break it down into two different videos. I, I'll do 
this one today, which would be chapter one, and I'll, I'll do chapter two. I'm gonna try to shoot for Saturday now. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm not kind of. I'm a, a very, very small content creator. Um, I, I don't get paid to do this. Um, I don't expect people to pay me to do this. It's just that I love trading card games. I love board games and tabletop RPGs. Um, that it's just a passion of mine that I want to talk about this stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't have as much time as other people do to create content. Um, so I can only drop like maybe one, two videos a week for now um, until things slow down. I got, you know, four kids, teenage boys. Uh, one's getting ready to ship off to the military, following in my footsteps um, as I was a veteran, as most of you know. Um, and then the other one's going off to college here soon. Um, so I'm very busy. We got soccer starting tomorrow, the soccer season. My son Morrison's playing. And then we got a trip to Florida next month for my son Lyric uh, to do some uh, JRTC competition, which is, uh, you know, junior army stuff. So very, very busy. And we're also re, 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 renovating, re, re, renovating our uh, house um and doing some laying some hardwood and stuff so it's been a very very busy month so it's kind of why i haven't been able to drop as many videos as i'd like to but as uh things slow down you guys are going to see me post a lot more content um next month we'll be uh moving on from uh legions realms at war we'll be uh talking about a couple new games next month uh they're actually some board games tabletop games that we're going to be discussing and reviewing uh, if you guys don't already know legion Realms at War has already got the first uh, Betflix and Chills um, stamp of approval. We gave it a uh, 8 out of 10. It's a fantastic game. Um, I was blown away by it. didn't think I was going to get so uh, addicted to a game uh, so quickly, but um, there I was uh, getting addicted to it. So um, pretty pretty stoked to, uh, to um, uh, be into that game. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why, but every time I connect... Uh, some music in the background it doesn't seem to want to take so I'm sorry bear with me for a minute while I try to figure out why it's doing that because it's playing on one side but not on the other so uh, let me turn that volume down a little bit there should be a little bit of music in the background for you guys uh, but yeah I think I got it to work I don't know why it decided to cut itself off but anyways we're gonna be covering tonight Right there, you see it. The Great War Begins. It's called The Tyrant Saga. It's uh, written by uh, the CEO of Future Lore Studios and the creator of Legion's Realms at War, Taylor Howe. Um, so let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. I'm, I've only read this once or twice, so bear with me. I might make a few mistakes in uh, enunciating some of the, the words in here. Um, but yeah, let's start it. It's called The Tyrant Saga. And it was written by Tyler Howe and co-written by Crowskin. And I'm assuming that must be somebody that works with uh, Future Lore Studios. This is a good friend of Taylor Howe's. I'm not really sure who that is. But let's begin. Um, Just inside the Vale of Aegis, at the base of the storm-held mountains, thousands of orc warriors floored, flooded the outskirts of the mortal realm. It was here they were ordered to rest for the night. For the next day, behind the great orc king Omgoth, they were... They were to raise steel against steel in a battle with Eloria for its honor. Omgoth was well known throughout the ravaged realms as a vicious and ruthless king, an orc ruler sworn to avenge his fallen ancestors during the battle of the Supreme Sunder. However, Omgoth was not just known for his moniker in the native realm, but in the mortal realm as well. No one dared to even mutter his name throughout the small villages of the mortal realm without enticing fear. He was the greatest known threat to all Lorian crown and their centuries-long stranglehold of power over the surrounding realms and their kingdoms, a threat not taken lightly. In the passing years, there have been flickering rumors in the halls of the mortal kingdoms of Amgoth's potential up to, up, uprising, which was always met with a scoff of hubris on the part of the heroes. The stronghold of the mortal flame inside the high walls of the kingdoms of Eloria have not been breached for over four centuries. In the eyes of the heroes within those walls, in or, any orc, even an orc war king, would not have the strength or will to overcome the fortification of what of that magnitude. Boy, I'm having some issues tonight reading. I apologize. <laughs> However, amongst his own legion of orcs, their confidence would tell a different tale. King Amgoth's powerful reputation is what was unified the savages from all around the rubbish realm for a solitary goal, the fall of the great king, human kingdom of Loria. This was the promise to revenge the centuries of oppression and the disregard of the collective orc kind. 
Behind their malicious king, the orcs have gathered for the chance at glory, were licking their lips with the, with the thought of human blood and absolute carnage. The orcs now have the opportunity for their realm to become the superior realm. As a result, the orcs' battle camp was alive with the sound of anticipation. Grunts, war songs, and rashes banter filled the evening air as they were readying their weapons and armor by the flicker of a crackling bonfires. The inevitable slaughtering of the humans that would come next day grew tantalizingly closer. Omgoth shifted his attention to another monumental moment of his reign. It was inside his grand war tent, clad in all his embellishment, that the Orc King deserved that the greatest achievement to his name were taken their first gasp of air. See, Omgoth had everything a king of the ravaged realm could ever want. A menacing army, terrifying reputation, and a brute strength that was only showcased by his iron, fist-like rule. However, there was one thing every great king throughout history sought. A lineage. An offspring that could carry on the legacy he was forever building upon. An heir to the soon-to-be, all-powerful Orc Kingdom of Tardaxia. And it was on this very night, on the eve before his great battle as king, Omgoth welcomed not one, but two heirs to his war throne. Emerging from his tent, bare-chested, muscles glistening, he let out a loud and rever reverberating roar which echoed across the encampment into the surrounding mountains, a bellow so deep that it snuffed out every other noise in the valley, demanding full and immediate attention from the amassed army. This was not a roar of anger or an infamous battle cry. This is a powerful war that has never come from the prominent to the orc king before. This was a roar of pride. Dawn and the menacing banners at once streamed in glory above the war tent, colored in bright green, but aged as if dipped in ancient blood, now held his most prized accomplishment. In each of his powerful hands, he hoisted up freshly squirming twin heirs to the thousand eyes gazing upon from his horde. The king was not superstitious leader. However, he felt in his heart and soul that there was no coincidence that his heirs to his throne were born on the eve of such definite battle. Born strong, healthy, and prosperous, the twins would almost seem to be clear in omnipotent omen. They seemed small in his large grasp, yet they symbolized so many possibilities. Male and female, brother and sister, royalty, and warrior. These heirs meant the menacing orc kingdom of Tardaxia would have leaders for the next generation. Sharn the Azizul, bonded by blood and destined for greatness. Witnessing the infinite of hearing Amgoth's powerful roar, the horde began pounding steadily heartbeat of weapons upon shields and fist against chests, loud and monotonous, like the uh, like the ever very earth beating its heart drum for them. Each vibration seemed echoed deep and carried vast into the mountains of Stormhold. Occasionally, the orc hold would add the loud guttural holler as each joined in the monumentous display of celebration for their imposing leader. The kingdom beamed with a malicious grin as he soaked in each and every moment of his glory. His voice added another roar of pride for their children that carried his blood in their veins. It was at this moment in honor of celebration that the Tardaxian horde vowed their allegiance and their loyalty to the lineage of the war king. In each hand rested the squirming new life. It was then, as the sun set in the horizon, a storm beam of light had pierced through the mountain pass, marking the entrance of the great war tent. This happened as if, ironically, summoned by the setting sun. The Orc Queen, Decimaya, mother of these glorious gifts of the Ravaged Realm, had parted the boar skin pelts and emerged. She stood powerfully dressed with a brilliant blackened cape that hung from her shoulders, flowing freely from her ornate shoulder pauldrons, which shone in the piercing light. Her form, the epitaph of visceral strength carved in scarred flesh. Each curve and muscle tone with a fine edge as if her body were forged from hardened steel. Even the labors of children seemed to unhinder her. As it had done nothing to weaken the fight in her eyes or the blaze in her chest, indeed, it had been seen to give her brilliant green screen a distinct glow that beamed in unforeseen possibilities. At that moment, the orc royalty stood unified together for the first time, and the orc's army bowed in supplication to the regal sovereigns before them. However, Desamaya would remain as strong, strongly defiant as ever. Her eyes burned with intensity as she watched the others with slow and methodical observation. King Amoth's putrid face was flushed with pride as he turned to his beautiful yet malicious queen and spoke, Thank you, my dearest wife. These will be the heirs to my throne. 
My boy Azizul will surely be a great king like his father one day. But before those bowed in awe, respect could even utter a word of agreement or a cry of horror, Desamaya, who disagreed with this proclamation, would thrust her powerful fist forward deep into his chest cavity. She ripped through his bare green flesh like a sack of grain and shattered the strong bones of his rib cage as they splintered into fragmented pieces. It was a sickening noise of crunching and gushing and a horrific scene of heresy. If the pounding rhythm of the orcs showing their respect had mimicked the joyful heartbeat of the king's pride, then this sudden drop into the husband's shock also mimicked his death, for Desamaya ripped free his warm, pulsing heart with his body still standing. Still beating, she brought his heart to her hungered lips as it streamed his life liquids and took one triumphant bite. Her eyes then up with even more invigorating power as she fed upon his fleshy, muscled heart. As his eyes rolled back lifelessly, those quickly and deadly hands of the tyrant queen reached out, snatching her newborn children from his doomed arms. The late King Amgoth's body fell with a final thud to her feet, weighted with a thousand eyes of shock from the orc horde. The king was dead. Queen Desamaya, the now solitary sovereign, stood clutching the two children in her arms. Her face was still coated with the blood of their... Uh, their and face, I'm sorry, the two children as her arms and face were still coated with the blood of their father's blood. She spit to the ground the remnants of the war king's still quivering heart for the entire army to see. None could tear their eyes from such a sight, and their attention dared not pull away from her. For in this singular moment, everyone would hear her speak. She called out to them a clear and unmistakable command. You serve me now. A long, shockingly silent moment lingered upon her words. The horrific, uneasy feeling reverberated with the gravity of the situation. Each member of the Orc Horde paused, staring in wide-eyed awe at the tyrant king who slaughtered their king in full view of them, daring not to even glance at the still body which lay at her feet. The mother of the twins who christened herself in his blood was too imposing to ignore. She was a blood-soaked monolith painted in royal crimson. It was then the silence was broken as viscera, the one known as a vicious vixen emerged from the crowd, raising both in form and voice. She hoisted her famously large steel feasting claw into the air and shouted, Long live the queen! The fining moment passed. Viscera raised her tone of voice again with a growl, and she continued flailing her wickedly large steel feasting claw high into the sky. Scream again, Long live the queen! It was just like that. A cascade of roars filled the fear of royalty sounded throughout the valley. Mimicking the vicious vixen, weapons of all kinds were, kinds were raised in the air as they joined the rally of the same, same powerful chorus, over and over until the words became ingrained in each of their minds that they would never forget. Long live the queen. Long live the queen. And like that, the horde's loyalty was decided. Desamaya, then as powerful as thunder and as clear as ice, roared over the army once more. Gather the war bowers, ready the catapults, and sharpen your steel. We attack Aloria tonight. With this loud, definitive statement, she turned her cape flailing in the air as she cradled her two infants and returned to what was now her war tent. Going forward, the queen's word would be law, and no one would dare challenge her authority. For bloodshed was already started, and now the tyrant queen desired more. Only the next time they smelled the ac acrid stench of blood, it would be human. The queen now fortified with determination and entitled with her new position as a head of the largest amassed orc horde in over four centuries, looked upon her children with surprise, with pride. She spoke clear and confident to them. Tonight, my young warlords, marks a new beginning. Wow. So, yeah. That is the Tyrant Saga, Chapter 1. Um, so, if you guys aren't playing Legion's Realms at War, what's really cool about this story... That I, I actually just uh, got when I was reading it was when if, if you pick up the two-player battle decks, they come in in groups. Like when you buy these decks, it's it's basically for you and a friend to play right out of the box. So you get like the angels with the demons, and then you get like the undead, I believe, with the mythical beast. And what's really cool about this story is it's the orcs, and in the dual deck packs, it comes with the heroes which they talk about in the story. That's who they're pretty much getting ready to go war with. 
So I thought that was pretty cool as I was reading. I didn't I didn't notice it the first couple times I read it. I should have probably read it a little bit more because I definitely stammered on some of my words there. But it's also very hard for me to read without my glasses. But I don't want the light shining and beaming off them into everybody's eyes while I do this video. So I kind of got to struggle with my eyes. But yeah, I think it was actually pretty cool um, that um, they uh, they had that on there. Um, that the heroes and stuff like that were on there. That, that is just pretty cool. Um, it just goes to show you like the uh, passion and the work that Taylor Howe and obviously Crowskin, um, who co-wrote this, put into these stories. And that's why I think it's really important to um, talk about these this lore um, because it's just so overshadowed. Because we just we just play these TCG games and we get into collecting the cards and stuff, and we just overlook all the hard work they put into this stuff. Um, so yeah. Pretty interesting story. I'm, I'm pretty psyched to see where chapter two goes. Um, as you guys know, I'm trying to make my videos a little bit shorter because I was doing like almost hour long videos um, and I, I just felt like they were a little bit too long. So I was trying to dumb them down for everybody and then, you know, just kind of go over the lore for the rest of the month because we've already covered, um, you know, the mechanics of the game. We've already talked, uh, we done a, we did a tabletop discussion where I talked with friends and fans uh, that are playing the game right now. And so this was kind of the last thing I want to do was focus the rest of this month and just read a lot of the lore. And I think that we can get through all the lore um, for the remainder of this month before we move on to our next two games. Now, with that said, I always say this. Um, like I said, I was a huge Magic fan, but Legion's Realms at War has just surprised me so much that it's kind of my go-to game right now. Um, I'm highly, highly addicted to it. Um... Like I said, I bought like five or six booster set boxes. I have tons of cards, um, you know. But I'm still chasing a couple cards, and that's fine. That's the that's the fun of uh, collecting uh, uh, trading card game uh, stuff. Is you know collect uh, getting that chase. Um, I just got a uh, I got a uh, Titan War uh, Titan Guardian and a Undead Guardian left to pool. So I had a friend pull one last night, and then of course uh, her brother pulled uh, Trent. He pulled. Uh, a soothsayer from the Bountiful Harvest, so that was pretty cool. Some really good pulls. But yeah, I got a couple more things to chase, but I'm probably not going to buy booster sets to chase those uh, when I can just buy single packs, and that's what I think I'm going to do is just buy a few single packs and uh, go from there, and hopefully I pull them, uh, those two cards that I'm missing. So, But yeah, um, that was a Tyrant Saga. Uh, kind of, it, It's kind of cool because Ravage Lands is out right now. That's the... Or, it was their first expansion before Bountiful Harvest, and uh, Ravage Lands kind of um, goes with the uh, the orcs. Um, that's their their uh, realm. So um, yeah, it's it's a pretty interesting story. I, I'm kind of excited to see where uh, Chapter Two goes. And like I said, I'll try to uh, I'll try to cover Chapter Two Saturday if I have time. Like I said, I'm gonna be a little bit busy with some home renovations and stuff. But if I can't. I will always be back on Wednesdays with more lore. Um, that's when I'm going to be doing lore talk is on Wednesdays. And uh, even though we're moving into some new games next month, uh, Legion's Realms at War is my, my go-to game. Um, i always be talking about it and covering something with it every month um, because I'm going to continue to do lore talk and stuff like that and probably some pack openings even if we move on to some new games. So, uh, But yeah, I appreciate everybody showing up, if those of you that did. And I will try to be back on Saturday. I'll post it in my Discord. Um, I'll post it on um, my Facebook page here, the Vetflix and Chills Tabletop Gaming Facebook page. I'll post if I'm going to be going live on Saturday. But it might be a last-minute post, but I'll, I'll try to post it you know, a few hours, letting you guys know if I'm going to be able to go live. If not, I will definitely be back Wednesday, same time, 7 o'clock p.m. Central, with uh, more lore talk. But hopefully we can uh, cover Chapter 2 on uh on saturday but thanks everybody for showing up uh i appreciate it and remember when life has you down roll for initiative and keep playing my friends have a great night